What is up, rockers of the Rock Nation? This is your fellow rocker here, X Rockerman X. And well, I'm here a little bit of a day late, but I'm doing this. Hopefully, I can get it posted before Raw comes on tonight. So I'm thankfully recording this Monday. But I just got done watching Survivor Series. I didn't watch it last night because, let's just say, I slept most of the day and I didn't pick up it anyway. And to be honest. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to sound like a dick, but I'm kind of glad I didn't watch it last night alive and I waited for today to watch it because this just seemed like one of the most. I'm not. I'm not trying to complain here about Survivor Series, but I called it. This Survivor Series did not feel like Survivor Series. It did not even feel like a single Survivor Series. Maybe it was because Seth Rollins being injured. <laughs> WWE's fault. <laughs> no, but seriously. I don't know why. It's just, I called it and I knew it wasn't going to, but then again, it's probably because I didn't watch it live. I watched it on the thing, but my point is, this Survivor Series really did not feel like a Survivor Series. I mean, granted, it had two traditional 5v5 limited tag match, one in the pre-show, one during the main card. I saw that one in the pre-show, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? I'm going to talk about it later, but it's like... WWE, what are you doing? This is a big four pay-per-view. WrestleMania, SummerSlam, Royal Rumble, and fucking Survivor Series. Survivor Series is your last big four pay-per-view of the year. You could have at least... I understand TLC's coming. I understand Royal Rumble's coming up. But the point of it is, why WWE? I'm not being a bitch about it. I'm not complaining. I'm not going to yell. Well, I might yell later when I talk about it. But why? Do you do this? I understand you have probably reasons for it, but this, again, this Survivor Series felt nothing like a Survivor Series should feel like. Big Four pay-per-view, and I keep saying this, but it's true. Felt nothing like a Survivor Series. Nothing at fucking all. Jesus Christ. Now, enough of the rant, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. This pay-per-view just felt bad. And there's so many problems with it, I could touch the surf. I, I, I can barely touch the surface, and that's probably why I'm going to, I'm just going to barely touch the surface on it. But, enough about that. On to the pre-show match, a.k.a. the first 5v5 elimination tag match, which had the teams of Miz, Bo Dallas, Stardust, and The Ascension, versus Neville, the Dudley Boys, Titus O'Neil, and Goldust. Wait, yeah. Yeah, Dudley Boys, duh. Sorry, I was thinking, I'm like, yeah. And when I first saw this match, I was like, is this, before I saw the other one on the main card, I was like, is this seriously where they're putting the 5v5 elimination tag matches on the pre-show? Are you saying this match is not, well, obviously, probably not that important, that you put it on the pre-show? When I first saw that, I was like, what? Because I didn't see main card matches. I got spoiled a little bit what happened at the end, but... Like, really? But, I guess, I don't really know what to say about this match. This match was okay at best. I mean, it wasn't obviously the best match of the night, because obviously it was a pre-show match. I mean, it was a good match, but it was okay at best. I mean, near the, I mean, during the beginning, it was like, what the fuck's going on here, you know? The Ascension, when the Ascension got eliminated right off the bat, stuff like that, you know? I mean, near the end, the match did pick up a lot. But it was really one-sided match. I'm not saying it was a bad match. The and well, I was sitting here thinking though, and I understand it's a pre-show match. But I was sitting here thinking, if this match is setting the pace for the night of Survivor Series, something's fucking wrong here. Something's fucking wrong here. I mean, overall, again, this match was an okay match at best to me. A lot of these were okay at best. They weren't the best, but this may have just again. But overall, the first pre-show 5v5 limited tag match that had teams of Miz, Bo Dallas, Stardust, and the Ascension versus Neville, the Dudley Boys, Tyre, Titus O'Neil, and Goldust, aka the team of Neville, Dudley Boys, Titus O'Neil, and Goldust won. And yeah, um, overall, the only really thing I can see coming from this match is with Goldust coming back and Stardust. You know, is there's going to be some sort of feud between, aka Goldust. There's going to be some kind of feud between Goldust, 
and Stardust, aka Cody Rhodes, but that's how I see it. Or somehow they're going to magically get back together. Maybe there's going to be all oh, sunshine and rainbows. Seriously, is what it's, I don't know. I've seen shit. But again, the winner of this match, the 5v5 Lumination Tag Match on the pre show, Neville, Dudley Boys, Tyson, and Goldust. That's all I really have to talk about with this match. Now we move to the first match of the night. We got Roman Reigns versus Alberto Del Roman Reigns versus Alberto Del Rio, aka the U.S. Champion, aka the Mex American Champion. I don't know. I mean, and I don't know what to talk about. I mean, for an opening match, it was a good one. I'm not going to say it's bad, but it was sort of predictable in a way. Like, oh, okay, Roman Reigns obviously going to win. I mean, yeah, I understand through Roman Reigns we're going to make him win. And I'm, but it was kind of predictable in general of what was going to happen. I mean, you could obviously tell. I mean, I'm not going to say it. Again, I'm not going to say it's a bad match. It was a good match. It wasn't a great match. It wasn't. It was a good match. That's really all I got to say. I mean, even though I did like the way Roman Reigns tried to break the armbar, a.k.a. where he could have won by DQ in advance, but overall this match, again, it was nothing special. I hate saying that. I mean, it's nothing so. I mean, for God's sake, we had the U.S. champion Alberto Del Rio in this match. Could have been something, but no. Our the match, nothing special. Roman Reigns did win, as I predicted. And then we have the next match of the night. We got Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. And overall, this match. No, and before I even go any further, this whole pay per view, uh, except for maybe one match. Literally. One match, and I'll get to that later, that I literally was doing other stuff, watching YouTube videos and stuff, and I had this on for background noise, and I was glancing up watching what was happening. That's really what was happening throughout this whole pay-per-view, and that's how I was feeling this whole pay-per-view. Like, I don't even feel like watching it all the way fully. I just want to glance at it, see what happens, go back to what I was doing, like I was doing other stuff watching, and it's just like, ugh. But anyway, the next match, and I've got the other semi-final match, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens. Yeah, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens, I can't speak... Overall, this match, like, from the beginning up until the end, or not the end, like, from beginning up until almost to the end, it was like, it just seemed to be slow and dragged out. I mean, I understand that's, I expect it to be somewhat fast-paced, because again, this is the second match of the night, you know, Kevin Owens, we see him do some shit, Dean Ambrose can do some shit in the ring, and it just seemed so dragged out, it wasn't even funny. I mean, the end of the match, most likely the best because of the shit that happened. And again, I'm going through this very skimmingly because I could talk about so much, but nah. But overall, and again, of course, this, pay this day late, so I'm, again, I can't really say much, so I wasn't really paying attention half the time, but. Again, this match could be enjoyable, I guess, but it just seems so slow and dragged out. Again, this whole pay per view seemed like a clusterfuck. This whole pay per view literally seemed like a clusterfuck. But overall, I was arrived at the pick. Dean Ambrose did win. As simple as that. And now we got the third match in the night. The second 5v5 limited time match on the main card. And I, I like how they had a, limited, a traditional Survivor Series match. But it's like two of them at that. And there's no purpose behind either of them. Like you could at least set something up to be some sort of purpose behind them. I mean, yeah, maybe they did. I don't know. But. The f with this 5v5 elimination tag match, we got Ryback, Lucha Dragons, and the Usos taking on Sheamus, King Barrett, and the New Day. And overall, and before I start, I will say that I did enjoy the match. Mainly because you got, I apologize if you hear that, heard that, that was my Xbox notification because I was just watching WWE Network again and I just did turn my TV down, whoops. But you have... Like, the Thanksgiving thing in the beginning with the New Day and just the New Day's antics. I've always liked that. And then you have Seamus, but I'm like, let's get Jiggy, uh, Jiggy with it. I'm like, really? And I'm sorry, I'll get, get more on Seamus later. But right now, I'm like, really? They had him do that? I mean, overall, the New Day, Thanksgiving thing in the beginning, the antics, and Xavier Woods all about his hair. It's just funny. I like it. And one thing I say that this 5v5 had that the first one didn't have... Which, at least, it was pretty much even up until the end. Which is when Xavier, or not Xavier, it's Biggie got eliminated in the, new, in the rest, New Day. Okay, Xavier Woods and Kofi took Biggie to the back. And you know that left? She Sheamus by himself. And no matter however this match would have went, no matter how much of a fight, fight Sheamus put up, you knew he was going to lose. 
simple as that. Now, I'm not saying this match was a bad match either. It was maybe okay or good at best. I mean, I'm not getting exact ratings. Okay, good at best. But it's just like... I don't know. I feel like that at Survivor Series, these 5v5 elimination tag matches need to have a purpose. Did these two, to me, seem like they did not have a purpose at all. And they really didn't. But overall, though, this 5v5 elimination tag match... Ryback, Luchy Dragons, and the Usos ended up picking up the win. It was a 3-1 to one scenario at near the end. Then, of course, the 3 beat the 1, a.k.a. the 1 being Sheamus. But, yeah, anyway. On to the next match. I'm really just realizing I'm going to think it's way too, a little bit, probably way too quickly. But, oh, well, fuck it. We're doing it live. Technically, it's not live when you watch it. But for me, it's live. Fuck it. Anyway. We got the Divas Championship match, Charlotte versus Paige. And I hate to say it's about the Divas match. I was starting to like Divas matches again. In this match, let me just say this. And by the way, I'm reading this exactly off my notes. So exactly how I what I wrote in. I'm reading these exactly what I wrote in, and this is there to say how I feel. I mean, but I understood that this match is more personal, and I literally put personal in quotes. But I just said the match is more personal. But I really hate to say, but this match. Well, yeah, I'm reading all my. But I really do have to say, but this match seemed. Like, one of the worst, and I mean the worst, Divas matches to date. At least to me. Again, I understand this match is more personal, but again, it just for a Divas match, it seemed slow, and the pacing seemed off, and just everything. I don't know. Maybe that's just to me. I actually do want to know your guys' opinion on all these matches, but I'll get to that later. But overall, the Divas Championship, Charlotte did win, and Charlotte did retain. Simple as that. Mm, that's really all I gotta say. Um, on the next match, then we got Dolph Ziggler versus. I will say too, these last three matches were enjoyable. There's one that was enjoyable the most. That one that I really, really enjoyed. But the last three matches could really be enjoyable. Why? Because just some stuff that really in it though. But the next match after Divas match, you got Dolph Ziggler versus Tyler Breeze. <sighs> oh, excuse me. And overall, I will say, I did, in, from what I've caught of, caught of the match while I was doing other things, I did enjoy the match. Why did I enjoy it? Because, mainly, you got two similar styles going at it. You got Dolph Ziggler's his style, Tyler Breeze's his style, style. Similar styles going at it really do make a good match sometimes. However, I will say, this the match still kind of sucked. Especially for a Dolph Ziggler match, this match sucked. But... I digress. I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, Tyler Breeze using Summer Rage of Shield, all this stuff, and all the other stuff. I don't know. Again, there's really not much I can say about this match or this pay-per-view in general, because from what I've caught up it, because it was just like... Because I was spoiled anyway, people telling me this... And I keep going back to this, but I was spoiled anyway in this pay-per-view, and people kept saying, I kept on social media, that, that my wrestling friends... Kept saying, oh, it sucked, it sucked. His favorite view was probably one of the worst, well, not one of the well, that's my view, probably one of the worst this year. But it sucked, it was horrible, you know, there's probably only one match that was good, and that's the match I like the best, which is coming up next. But it's just, in general, I'm kind of, it's probably what persuaded me not to watch all of it fully, like, having the background when I glance at it. But I can kind of see why they did that. And why I agree with them a little bit, too. I'm not kidding, either. Again, it just did not feel like Survivor Series. But anyway, Dolph Ziggler, ver Dolph Ziggler versus Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze picked up the win. Simple as that. And now we got the next match tonight. And this is the match that I completely enjoyed. Straight to the end. Beginning, middle, and end. Entrance to post-match. People could say it's probably because of nostalgia. But I really don't care. Because to me, it's not nostalgia. Assault, whatever. And this is the only match I watched all the way through. No interruptions. Literally, I actually had my full focus on this match. Why? Because it's literally of the whole card that was announced was the only one was the only match I was looking forward to. And this was the Brothers of Destruction, Undertaker and Kane versus the Wyatt family. And the two people of the Wyatt family was Bray and Luke. 
And again, I keep having to say this. This was my favorite match of the night. Why? Because, again, as I said, the one I was looking forward to the most, and it just seemed to me had the most action in it. Like, for real. I mean... Hell, man, let me see my notes real quick, see if I don't have any... Sorry, I was looking at that, but... You have Show Me getting double choked, same through the table. Tombstone, the Harper. You got you have the theatrics and the entrance, you know. You got the Undertaker, well, where Kane came out. He helped Undertaker with his entrance, basically. The Undertaker symbol on fire, you know. The dirt, the theatrics during the match, where Bray was going for Sister Abigail to spider walk. You know, and Undertaker just set up, and then... Kane set up at the same time there, both down while Luke was going for Kane. It was just all around probably the best match of the night. Fuck what people say about this match. Because I know there's people out there that says it was probably one of the worst. No. To me, this match was one of my favorite of the... Was actually my favorite of the night. And I really feel like the WWE Championship match should have went on first. Or should have went on last. This match should have went on last. I really feel like that. I really feel like this match should have went on last. Fuck what people say, but it's just this match is one of the best, and there's examples, like, even the double chokeslam to Eric Rowe in the beginning, you know, again, the double chokeslam to Slo S Strowman, like, you know, we don't see that shit happen to Strowman that often, it was just like, oh, I understand there's some botch with Harper in a tombstone, because it's hard to get a bigger guy into a tombstone like Harper, but still, this match, fucking amazing, just fucking amazing, that's all I gotta say. People can say what they want to about my opinion with this match, but still. But overall, all I gotta say is Undertaker and Kane, the Brothers of Destruction, picked up the win. There you go. And now on to the last match of the night that I really want to talk about. And overall, we got the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. The finals in the tournament, Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose. And overall, this match... Was a good match. It was an now, see you see how my voice would went down. I'm like, chill, chill, and then it just goes down. And then after talking about the, my favorite match, I was like, chill, I'm like, oh, and you tell I'm going back in that jury mode. But it was a good match. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it was exactly it went exactly how you how you expected to go. Eat and for the two competing earlier on the night, you know, even I got that rest, basically from the beginning of the show to the end of the show, but. You expect still some damage to be there, some hurt to be there. So, you know, it's kind of what you expect. I mean, this match, again, like, you know, anytime Dean Ambrose... I like anytime Dean Ambrose steps into the ring. Why? Because Dean Ambrose does crazy fucked up shit. This match, he didn't so much do it. But just the stuff he does, I like. And I'm not saying that the match, again, in Roman Reigns. I'm not particularly a fan of Roman Reigns, but some of the stuff he does can do in the ring. He has good ring skills. I like some of the stuff he does in the ring as well. I mean, I'm not saying that this match sucked. I mean, overall, the pay... Here's what I want to put. It wasn't the matches that sucked. It was the pay-per-view that sucked in general. Like, some of the matches were okay or good. Like, again, this match could be enjoyable. Again, I said the last three matches could be enjoyable. The Undertaker and Kane... The, the brother Shane versus the wife was my favorite and the most enjoyable for me. Because then I'm doing the creepy things. But with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match, it was just a good match. Between two best friends that have total respect for each other. And I do like that. And I will say is Roman Reigns picked up the win. And I'm going to get on the subject here for a second. And you know what? It could have went either way. Dean Ambrose could have won. I would have been happy. You know, he is from my home state. If Roman Reigns would have won. Like he did. I would have been happy too. Why? Because I would rather see either of these two men as champion over Rooster Face, you look stupid, Sheamus. I'm not going to say he looks stupid because of the beard, because I can respect the beard. But that mohawk, as I said before, needs to go. He needs to grow his hair back out. Normal. And then, oh, you know, you had Roman Reigns winning, you know, he comes out, he's crying, whatever, but that's because of his pride in his family. I don't see him being a big crybaby, but you have Roman Reigns come win the World Heavyweight, Cha the, the World Heavyweight Championship, you know. Triple come, comes out and congrat congratulates him. Oh, he spears Triple H. Okay. What's going to happen? Oh, by that time, you already knew it was going to happen. Oh, Seamus Cashin. Seamus Cashin. Bro kick. Kick. It's like. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nobody. No fucking body. Excuse me for yelling. 
wanted to see Sheamus, Sheamus, as World Heavyweight Champion. Nobody, listen to the pop, and I'm telling you guys right now, I'm getting angry at this too, and this is some part that I'm angry at now, and I knew this was going to happen. I don't care what people say. Go back, listen to the footage, listen to when Reigns wins the championship, listen to the pop for Roman Reigns. Then, oh, listen to when Sheamus wins? Cashes in and wins the belt? Listen to his pop. Nothing. All become pretty much completely silent. When Reigns went out, oh, it's a huge pop, basically. Or at least to me, it's not like a better pop. The lot of fucking it was Sheamus. What does it tell you? Nobody in the right fucking mind. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sheamus is a good ring person, is a good competitor. But nobody wants to see Sheamus. Rooster phase. Again, I can respect the beer, but the mall has to go. Nobody wants to see him as champion. Nobody. Nobody. And they're basically out there using Sheamus as a Rollins replacement. Like, for real. And it's not the fact that Sheamus won the championship that pisses me off. It's the fact that Sheamus... Look, he was doing fine for a while, up until he won, actually no, a little bit before he won the Money in the Bank, but pretty much you can tell it more when he won mo the Money in the Bank briefcase, which I still say needs to put on, needs, needs to be brought back to WrestleMania, that's beside the point, the Money in the Bank brief, ever since Sheamus, or a little bit before Sheamus won the Money in the Bank brief, briefcase, but it's more predominantly when he won the briefcase, they booked him so poorly, it's not even funny, for a while, he was on a fucking losing streak, and I think he still technically was up until prior to this. But the point of it is, Sheamus as champion, nobody won it! Ugh, calm down, Rocker, calm down. Again, I would rather see Roman Reigns as champion any day over Sheamus. And don't get me wrong, I used to like Sheamus, I still do a little bit, he's a good competitor. But Sheamus. Sheamus? Famous. I mean, I understand they st now I'm calming down a little bit. I mean, I understand they still had to do the whole authority angle some way. But you're making Sheamus basically, or at least what it seems like to me, you're basically making Rollins, or Sheamus Rollins, uh, blah, 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 blah. you're basically making Sheamus a Rollins replacement. And God knows Rollins will be six to nine months once he comes back off injury. Who knows where he will be after that? But it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. And you can tell where my point is. I don't know. I really don't know. A lot of people are pissed off about it. Even I'm pissed off about it. And I generally don't care. Well, that's a lie. I do care as champion not as a wrestling fan. But it's like... Sheamus. I mean, at least Roman Reigns can say he was champion for a good... F not even five minutes... But it's like, you couldn't have gave Roman Reigns his props. Why not do some of the... Why have Sheamus cashed in a Survivor Series? Why not do something more of a swerve and have him actually cash in on Monday Night Raw? Do a swerve. Cash in on Monday Night Raw. At least let Reigns have his moment. That's... that's. I mean, I understand a lot of people didn't have their moments and got cashed in on, but it's like, Sheamus has been, I think, WWE Champion three two or three times prior to now being fourth time, I think, to cashing in. He's been, like, two or three prior to cashing in. Again, I'm like, why not ha let Reigns at least enjoy having the belt for a while? Why? Because new talent, basically. He's been in there, been in XT. He's been on the main roster for about three years now, I think. New talent. That's where it leads down to. Let new talent have the belts. For a little bit, or either new talent in general, you know, like it's just like it's a simple request. New talent, Reigns is a new guy still. Technically, he's been on the main roster for three years, been in NXT for a little. I don't know. It's just, I really wish Sheamus wouldn't have cashed in. That's really what I gotta say. We got the World Heavyweight Championship match. Roman Reigns wins, has his moment, makes his family proud. You know. Then boom, Sheamus crashes in and fucks everything up. 
And nobody wanted Seamus as champion. Nobody wanted him at Rooster Face. And that's my ninja form. Rooster Face. Because he looks like a fucking rooster. I can respect the beard because, you know, I got one too. I can completely respect that, but the mohawk has to go. But, with all this being said, fuck Seamus. Middle finger to the sky. And yeah, I'm seriously pissed off about this and I shouldn't be. But I'm coming down now, but that's really all I gotta say. If you guys want to check out my the win and loss prediction thing for itself, link down in the description. My Facebook and my Twitter and my Twitch channel where I live stream video games, which I might actually do something different tomorrow, hopefully. Or whenever. Also down in the description. If you're new to the YouTube channel, subscribe if you want to. And until next time, guys, live free and rock.